Hello, hello guys. I want to speak about what was the spirit of prostitution in the book of Hosea. Now we see in that time in the in Israel there was a lot of uh, hoodom kind of spirit. And uh, God really spoke this through his prophet Hosea to try and tell people these are, these are people without knowledge. It's like uh, I'm giving them some unfa unfailing love to people who are unfaithful. And I, I want, as I speak about this, you think about the church today and how people are like. God is trying to love them so much, but they don't want. They want to do their own things. Now, first and foremost, let's, let's look at uh, Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says, my people ask, ask counsel at their stocks. And their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding that? So this is a graphic accusation against the children of Israel, whereby God is saying these people, they have become prostitutes, they have become whores. And what they are doing is, is, is unlike me. They, they are running away from me and going to worship idols. So, this provocative label is given to idolatrous. And uh, we read that the Israelites, the Jews, they, the Bible says they inquired of a piece of wood. It's like you're going to ask for help from some idol, from some wood. Like they always see Catholic going to, Catholics going to bow down to some some piece of cement, which is, is, you know, they call it Mary and, and saints and all that. It's just some, some idol which you, you have created by wood or you have created by stone. And you're going to seek counsel there. You see, this, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And what is happening right now was also happening back in those days. In other words, Israelites were consulting wooden idols. They had invested financially in making these idols or in asking others to give advice from idols. And this is happening even to date. So these idolaters were unfaithful to the Lord as they paid to have a relationship with other gods. It's, it's like you're giving your money so that a, a piece of wood can tell you if you'll be blessed or not. That uh, a piece of cement is going to explain to you how your future is like. Why waste all the money? Why waste all the energy? So God's people are to be faithful to him. And they should, they should chase after the true God. They should not be spiritual adulterers running up and down to every wind of doctrine. If somebody comes and says, I will... Sh like there's a pastor here in Kenya some time back... He was called Pastor Wahome. He was telling people that uh, when you pay a thousand shillings, he will check for you if your name is in the book of life. You pay a thousand shillings, he confirms if your name is in the book of life. Now, look, look at such hodom and uh, idol worship, thinking that this man is going to tell you if your name is in the book of life. While the Bible itself it says in the book of John that these things have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Why would you let someone else to know it for you? And they're just scammers. They just, they just want to look at Bushiri, look at uh, Al Fulukao, look at uh, 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 in the US, there are so many Copland, all, all those bunch of hypocrites who they call themselves pastors. All they do is just to make sure that they steal from you. And because you're so blind, you don't want to see, you commit hodom. Because when you go to consult these things, you're consulting idols. When I wake up today and I say, I'm going to ask um, this pastor to tell me about my fate, then uh, your trust is in the pastor is not in God. Fine. It's good people can discuss and say, what do you think about this? What, what do you feel God telling you? But not me telling you about your future. I know nothing. I know not, as, a, as a matter of fact, I also need help. I know nothing. Our help comes from God, doesn't come from man. The Bible says, whosoever puts his trust in man is cursed. So this spirit of hodom could have, 
could have been a poetic reference to Israel's desire to practice idolatry. They loved idolatry, these people. All the time, idolatry, left, right, and center. However, there is a real connection between idolatry and the spirit world. Look at uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 32, verse 17. Look at this. Look at what the Bible says concerning spiritual world and idolatry. It says, they sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see, people today, they are sacrificing to some gods who they don't even know. Have you seen the New Age religion? Whereby you see even in Christianity, church, in a Christian church, they are practicing this. They are saying, oh, we can call things into existence. Mm, I know there is a verse written like that. But do you get the context? Because you try, if you try to make yourself gods, then create your own earth and your own uh, heaven and live there. You see, there is a big difference between the, the, being a child of God and being God. Being God is a very different thing. You can't be God. Were you there from the beginning? Have you created the heaven and the earth? So you see this new age religion will tell you that you can create things. You can call things and then you just say TV and then TV falls there. You can call a mountain it falls there. And this is new age religion. And uh, you live and see in churches they are practicing yoga. They, they, they are doing some things and uh, they are calling some. I don't know what kind of thing they do. They say, uh, you know, there's some, what do they call it? Like some snake which comes to the head, something like that. Just go and check about New Age religion. And they say there is a force which pulls and force this, force that. Well, the Bible tells us very well in the book of Daniel that even the Antichrist, when the Antichrist will come, he will be worshipping a God, the God of forces, a God whom even is the, the forefathers, the forefathers of whoever will be the Antichrist, I've never even worshipped. I've never even known. The God of forces. Are you seeing these kind of things? They are, they are, they are worshipping some idols that people don't even know. Whom they have never... Now there is that God of forces. People, they say, oh, everything is a vibration. This vibrates and this, and you know, the universe and the universe, this and the vibration and Mother Earth and all those kind of useless things that they try to tell you. The Bible tells us very well that there are spirits, demonic in nature, which set themselves up as gods. They set up themselves as gods, these spirits, in this world, and they demand worship. When you see some people saying, oh, there's this spirit, this person was touched here and he fell down and he rolled like a snake. Mm. Do you know there's a, something called the Kundalini spirit? The Kundalini spirit it's that kind of spirit whereby you somebody touches you and you become obsessed you start shaking your head you start rolling like a snake falling down have you seen these things in church and they call it the holy spirit hmm do you think god is the the author of confusion you see women you know somebody touches them here they fall down women their legs are up there you, you ask yourself there are children here. These, these, are, these are in the church and people have come to worship. Why are these people neck? And now they have to go with a, um, with a, with a sheet to, 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 to put on top of the, of the legs of the women. And you ask yourself, is this really godly? Do you think God will be so much entertained by looking at uh, people getting naked in church and, and rolling like snakes and doing all those kind of things and, and uh, seeming as if they are possessed in the picture of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not, a, he's not the author of confusion. He doesn't work that way. He works in a very different way. The Holy Spirit gives us power to do his work. He gives us power and he, he teaches us all things. And he gives us a peace and knowledge and things like that. And the Bible tells us, how will you have more faith? By hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith does not come by laying of hands. I lay on new hands and then you say, Oh, this person is filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that's not true. If you want to be filled by the Holy Spirit, listen to his word more. Be deep in the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Pray more. Seek God more. Do the things of God more. And you will feel that the Holy Spirit is full in you. 
and you will do mighty and miraculous works and and you will work for God and and you will feel very close to God but the moment you stay away from God and and uh, you go away more and more you will feel the holy spirit being quenched you will feel that you're grieving the holy spirit it's like the holy spirit is getting far away from you you don't get the infilling of the holy spirit by laying of hands no it's by listening to god more praying more reading his word more faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and we need faith as a believer to be more powerful as we are preaching be more bold do more we work for god we only need faith we don't need anything else we don't need the power like to be uh, to be doing like this and then tvs fall and people fall no what's what's the essence what's the essence it's nothing have you seen the point here? So the spirit of Hodom could be a literal entity, a literal entity that led Israel astray at that time and is even leading people today astray. Now, when you look at uh, the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 3, Hosea chapter 4 verse 3, I just felt led to speak about this story of Hosea because it's really, really, really so important. This, uh, this part continues to delineate the problem that these people they sacrifice look at this therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and with the falls of the heaven yeah the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away are you seeing the point why why because these people they have gone away from god they have gone away from god and they are doing their own things. Look at verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. These people, they have lacked knowledge of the things of God. And they are going to sacrifice to idols, to worship idols, to be pros uh, 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 into hodom, into loving other things instead of loving God. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That is what God says. You shall be no priest of me, seeing you have forgotten the law of God. I will also forget your children. You see, we are supposed to be the priests of God. Jesus is the great high priest and we are also priests. He's the king. We are also kings. He's the Lord. We are also Lord. That's why he's called the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the great high priest because they are the priests. So you will not take, have this advantage if you have neglected God and you have said, I don't want the things of God and I don't want to be saved. I want to do my own things. Then because of that, no matter how much God has called you and you deny him and you say, I don't want to hear, then you'd be destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Look at the atheist. They say, oh, there is no God, there is no God. But they're only saying this because they lack knowledge. Ignorance is not a defense in a court of law. They want to say, oh, there is no God. Um, so should we believe there is no God? And then that's it. It's just because you're ignorant. You don't want to study. You don't want to learn. All right. So, we understand that uh, the Bible tells us very well that these people, they sacrifice on the tops of the mountains, burnt offerings. That's what the Jews were doing, the Israelites. On the hills, under oak, poplar and terbith, because their shed is good. Okay? Because when you're doing, you're sacrificing those sheds. They're, they're really good. You're enjoying the time. Therefore, their daughters play whole. Their daughters they played whole. Let me show you this in uh, uh, Hosea chapter uh, 4 verse 13. Look at this. Let me just read for you. I don't want to paraphrase and then you get lost. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under ox, poplars, elms. Because the shadow thereof is good. Alright? Therefore your daughters shall commit hodom and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters. When they commit hodom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For, for themselves are separated with hosts. They sacrifice with our lots. And the people that do not understand shall fall. Uh, there is already their doom. Their doom is already set. So if you stay away from the things of God and you do what you want, then God is saying, your time is coming. And uh, this is a good picture showing us how Israel prostitution. You see, all these things are written for our admonition so that we can be able to know how it was. Then also, this time, it's like that. There's nothing new under the sun. What they did, people are doing it the same thing. Because we see very well, 
Israel's spiritual prostitution included offering sacrifices to false gods. How many times have you offered sacrifices to false gods here? So many times. Anything that you put before God, right now people are putting money like everything else. Money is like a god to everyone. If you put money as your god, then that becomes your god. And this was a violation of God's laws that commanded sacrifice only, only to the Lord in the temple of Jerusalem. We know right now the temple of God is in us. We should pray to God and seek him diligently from our hearts because that's where the temple is. But people nowadays, they, they, they want to put their hopes in different things. And this is a picture of Hodom. All right? So the worship of other gods often included actual prostitution, sexual sin that Israel's, Israelites had been commanded to stay away from. And uh, such strong words from God through the prophet Hosea were intended to condemn idolatry and call Israel unto repentance. And God offered forgiveness and restoration. Even to those who had been so wicked, he offered restoration. Hosea himself served as an example and a good example of God's grace. Think about Hosea when he was, uh, God told him to go and marry uh, a prostitute. It's like God was saying, this is how I feel, guys. This is how I feel. When you keep on running away from me, and I keep on buying you back, and I keep on showing you grace, this is how I feel. Hosea, go and marry that prostitute woman. But God, you see, she's, she's already gotten to another man, and she's already bore children with another man. No, go and pick that. She's your wife. Pick her up with all those children of Hodom, and come and be with her. Let her stay here. She stays a little while she goes again. Hosea is like, no, God, now she's gone and she's gone and she's even given birth to other children in her old. No, go and pick her and pick even the children. Come with them. It's like God is trying to tell us, this is how I feel when you're running away. You run away. I want to pull you back. I want to be good to you. I want to show you grace. The wife of Hosea, Gomer, she was unfaithful to him, yet he restored his relationship with her so many times. Look at this verse. Hosea, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Look at this. He tried to restore relationship with him so many times. In the beginning, uh, uh, sorry, the beginning of, of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of Hodoms and children of Hodoms. L look at that. You're going to pick a wife of Hodom and children of Hodom. And we see also in verse 3. Uh, in uh, chapter 3, Hosea chapter 3, uh, verse uh, what? Let me show you this. Verse uh, 1 to 5. Look at what it says. 3, 1 to 5. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, Go ye, love a woman, beloved of our friend. You see? Go love a woman who is already an adulteress, who already loves someone else. Go and love her and be with her. Pick her up. I want to show you how I feel. When these people are running away from me, this is how I feel. You give yourself to Satan, but I want to pick you up there still with your dirtiness and all your problems. I want to pick you up again for myself. Go love a woman, beloved of a friend, yet an adulteress. According to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who took, who looked to other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I bought, brought her to me for 15 pieces. I bought her for me for 15 pieces of silver and for an ahoma of barley and half an ahoma of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So I will also be for thee. You see, God is telling Hosea, Go and purchase her. Go and love her. Bring her back. That's exactly the picture of how I feel. God is trying to show, this is how I feel. When you go and you stay with Satan, and Satan you know very well, he doesn't love you. He just wants to hoe you around and then he throws you up. Because Satan only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But yet you cannot see these things. But God still, in the same way, God is still willing to restore his relationship with his people who, had, who have already strayed away into idolatry. So, when you look at Hosea in chapter 14, the final chapters, it reveals that the Lord's desire for his people is this. Let me show you. 
Hosea chapter 14. Uh, when I show you verse 1, let's go to verse 1. It speaks to us how God wants to love them back. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So I will render the curls of our lips. God wants to pick you back. He's so willing to love you back, but yet you're still running away. But he's not done with you. I know there are many people who say, uh, but uh, if, uh, if, if, if I'm saved and I deny God and I say, God, I don't want you. Uh, is now have I lost my salvation? Let me tell you. You see, God always shows us these things, these pictures, to try and explain to us how we are so important to him. The Bible tells us, I think it's in the book of Timothy, that uh, uh, God will not deny himself. Let me look at this verse. Let me show you this verse. I want to, I want to show you this so that you can understand. Mm, uh, let me... I want you to see this verse, all right? Second uh, Timothy two thirteen. Second Timothy uh, two verse thirteen. Look at this. Look at this verse. It tells us, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Look at uh, this picture of Hosea and the wife. The wife denied, denied Hosea so many times. But because Hosea remained faithful and he could not deny himself, then this woman was going and he was still picking her back, bringing her and telling her, no, you're still mine. You may go, you might have gotten other children out there, you might have done whatever you've done, no, but you're still mine. We already have an agreement. You're my wife. You're not going anywhere. That's a picture of Christ. He tells us very well. If we believe not, sometimes we are like this hallowed woman. We don't believe. We feel as if, no. I, even Moses himself. Moses himself. There's a time when Moses told God, God, blot me out from that book. Wrap me from that book. Definitely, I'm sure he was talking about the book of life. Look at this. Exodus. Exodus uh, 32, verse 32. Think about this. Moses telling God, blot me out. Blot me out. And God told me, no, 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 no. Moses, you, you think you're going anywhere? You already signed. You're mine. You're not going anywhere. Even if you deny me, I cannot deny myself. I can't go away from you. Look at this. Yet now, if you will forgive their sins, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which you have written. Look at what Moses is trying to tell God. Blot me out from your book. Rub me out from that book of life. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. It's not you. I am going to blot out those sinners, those people who, have, who don't have a covenant with me, who don't have an agreement with me, who are not married with me, those who are still uh, living their own way, and those who have never accepted me. But once you get saved, do you think God is going to blot you out? No. No. You may be like this wife, this hallowed woman, Gomer, you will go and go and go, do whatever you have to do, fight up there, but he will still come and pay you back and pick you up from that dust. Because God has an ending love. That kind of love, agape love. And this picture of Hosea is a good picture to show us how much Jesus loves us. Sometimes when we are... This kind of love, of course, when we are saved and we are trying to live in the spirit, but... Our flesh is still pushing us back. We can rely on God and tell him, God, you told me. Just like you, you told Hosea to go and pick up that harlot woman. I become a harlot, God. Please pick me up again. Pay, pay. Buy me up. And these problems which are here. Because one day, one time, you're going to get a new body. A new body. You're going to be redeemed. And all this... Uh, hold on. Will be over. Will be over. Are you getting the point here? So, we have to understand this fact so clearly. And uh, 
when we look at uh, Hosea chapter 14, let me show you this. Hosea chapter 14 verse uh, oh, mm, verse 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 verse. Let's let's think about verse 7. Look at what what uh, God is talking about restoring, sorry. Hosea uh, 14 verse 7. Look at this. God is trying to think about how he will restore you. Restore you. When I'm talking about Israel, I want to show you a picture because that one also represents you right now. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. If you dwell under the shadow of God, you're a believer, you shall return. There is nowhere where you can go. You can run, but you cannot hide. They shall revive as corn and grow as the vine, and the scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. You see, as long as you're under the shadow of God, as long as Jesus is still your husband, you will run and run and run, but he will still pull, pull you back. He'll still tell you, pay, pay up where Satan is trying to chain you and bring you back to himself. All right? So, despite wayward Israel, uh, you know, Israel's wayward kind of lifestyle of... Uh, trying to follow a spirit of prostitution of, of, or, or, or of wisdom. It is clear that the Lord's desire was to restore his people. He has always wanted to restore his people. And uh, he's always calling them to repentance and to have a renewed relationship. This is gracious offer to sinners still extended to individuals today. Even to date, what was happening in that time, it is also extended to you today that you can believe the gospel and be changed. He has offered forgiveness of sin and the opportunity for a relationship with God for everyone who trusts in him. Jesus is always there calling and telling you, please, please stop running away. I still want you back. Satan is trying to pull you into idolatry and things and, and lies and all those kind of things. Please run away from him. He's only a deceiver coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Come back to me. Come back to me. And God has already given us a way of salvation of what exactly he has offered for you. When we look at the Bible in uh, the most famous verse on the planet, I think, John 3.16, what does it say? God has given us this chance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. He's, he's like calling you. And you know, many people think that Jesus came so that he can tell us how bad we are. Or stop doing this, stop doing that. The Bible tells us in verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. The world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is always calling you, telling you, come back, come, come, believe in me so that you may not be condemned. And once you become my wife, I will fight for you. It doesn't matter where Satan is trying to pull you to. I will fight for you. I'll be there for you. And it's a free gift. I'm giving you a free gift. I'm not telling you to give me anything. I'm not telling you to give me anything. See, Jesus is, is, is given free salvation. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's only faith alone. Just loving God alone. Putting all your trust in God alone. There's nothing else. That not of yourselves. It is a gift. A gift of God. It's free. It's a free gift. You're not being asked to pay some money or to do something. No, it's a free gift. Just, just believe. Believe in the blood that Jesus shed for you. Not of works, lest any man should boast. There are people who say, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. There's nothing you need to do. It's a free gift. It's purely a free gift. Come back to Christ. For those who are still not saved, the gospel, it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins and he was buried and rose again. Jesus laid his life for you and he's calling you he's telling you come 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 and get my life come i am the living bread 
come and eat of me. Come and get my life. Because where you're going, you're going to die. Here you have no life. Come and have my life. Are you willing to have his life? All right. If you enjoyed this video, please, uh, you can give it a like. You can also subscribe and uh, and also likewise check out the description below. We have other channels outside YouTube. Please go and check them out and also share to your friends. If you feel led to support this ministry, please, there are links down there. Please do something. God bless you and have a blessed time.